So here we have some fitness testing data, which we're happy is reliable given the coefficient of variation here, and we've calculated that in a previous video. So it's fit for use for some further analysis. In this context, we're going to use it to set the athletes some, some targets. And here we have their pro agility score. So the next time we come to test them, how much faster can we expect them to, to run it in, or what should we be asking them to run it in? Now the target we set them needs to be large enough to fall outside the error of the test and thus be a, a true score, yet small enough to be achievable by the athletes and thus generate some success amongst them and us as coaches. So one way we can compute that, that target score is using the smallest worthwhile change, and that's described by Hopkins in his paper here, and that's freely available on the web. The smallest worthwhile change is described as 0.2 times the between subject standard deviation, standard deviation that computers follows here. The 0.2 uh, part relates to uh, a magnitude of, of change between means and is based on the work of Cohen. Uh, but we look at that in another video uh, on effect sizes. So let's go and calculate our smallest worthwhile change uh, for our scores. So it's 0.2 times between subject standard deviation, and that comes out as 9 milliseconds. So when we set our targets for our athletes, we expect them to run it second time round in the later fitness testing battery and uh, to run it 9 milliseconds faster. So let's establish what that time is uh, for everyone. Minus 0.09, and then we can feed that back to them and uh, and check that they obtain that. Now the problem with the smallest worthwhile change is uh, this score here, nine milliseconds. Are we really confident? Uh, that we have the measuring capability to detect a change that, that's, that, that is that small. Now one way we can go ahead and, and, and check that is using our coefficient of variation because the coefficient of variation suggests that each score actually has an error of plus or minus 2.7%. So what does that 2.7% relate to uh, in milliseconds? So to calculate that, we can get our mean divided by 100 and times by the coefficient of variation. And so actually the error of the test is 14 milliseconds, which is greater than the smallest worthwhile change. So in this example at least, this may not be the best way to uh, produce some target scores for our athletes. But if we take things to extreme now and, and acknowledge that there's error in, in the first test we've done, we know that error is 40 milliseconds, but there's also going to be error in the second test. So really, the score we should be setting should be double this CV. And that example, albeit an extreme one, is that they could uh, have run the first test 14 milliseconds faster and the second test 14 uh, milliseconds slower. And that's where their, their true scores actually were. So let's go and calculate the, the uh, double the CV, let's cause this times 2. And so to really be confident um, of true changes in scores, each athlete would have to run the test faster, or indeed slower, by 28 milliseconds. So if we uh, go ahead and, and calculate that, it's minus the 28, and here we have some our new scores, which, can, which you can see are quite notably faster. And perhaps you reach that point now where you have a trade-off between statistical rigour and coaches' intuition, whereby the, the, the rigour is, is, is so conservative to, to be confident of identifying a change that you set some unobtainable goals and, and coaches might recognise that these could really be masking some significant changes made by each athlete. So we may need to develop some sort of compromise between the two. Now, a good compromise might be just to expect a 5% change uh, in scores. That will be different between athletes and 
one way that we can really work on getting that lower is to, in the first instance, making our data collection as reliable as possible because the smaller the CV, the more powerful our tests are at detecting change. Um, but let's go ahead and, uh, and, and calculate a 5% change. We can just do that for, for each athlete. So is their score and a 5% reduction would be 0 0.95. So these would be the, the, the new scores of the athlete. So given that this test actually had a really good coefficient of variation, there's not a huge deal of difference between the two. But you can imagine if this, this score was a lot higher, you'd, you'd be looking at providing the, the athletes with some targets um, that were really quite uh, unobtainable. So setting a 5% benchmark across the board uh, might provide that that mix um, of uh, of rigor and and intuition.